Hello and welcome to another edition of Nation Building. On our program, we examine the political, social, and moral issues in the leadership of, of the Bahamas. On our program today, we're pleased to bring you a very exciting guest, but one will give a lot of information. He has history of our country. We'll introduce our guest right after this break. I've been a customer for the past two years, and I will say the quality of the service is very good. During my trip to Andres, I was connected the entire trip, so that was really good. I was able to contact my family members and let them know how the trip was going. We touch land, we're here, so it was very, it was very good, and I really appreciate that. And also during times like when we had the storm, it was really good to have that service to reach out to our loved ones to make sure everyone is okay. And I really appreciate a lot for that. And even when there's a little technical difficulty, they always send out a little text message to let us know if exactly what's going on. I'm happy to be alive and I believe in best. Hello, I'm Wendell Jones. And every time I sit down and I watch JCN television, I drink the Jamaica Bahama food juice. It's so pleasing to the palate. I've been cooking Bahamian dishes for generations. I now use Jamaica Bahamas product. The rice is very fluffy, very tasty, and good eating. Jamaica Bahama product is simply the best. As an insurance agent, my life is go, go, go. But whenever I need a refreshing break, it's Jamaica Bahamas Island Mixed Fruit Drink. Mmm, good. Hi, I'm Debbie Bartlett from GEMS 105.9 FM. The effect that Island Junkanoo Juice Medley has on me is <laughs> exhilarating. Hello. Did you get it? Yes, baby. I got it. Don't come home without it. These arms of mine, they are yearning, yearning for wanting you. Where is it? Strongback is distributed by the Jamaica Bahamas Import and is available at your favorite food or convenience store nationwide. For more information, call 341-4091 in Nassau and 351-8282 in Freeport. Hello and welcome back to Nation Building. Uh, on our program today, we have uh, a very, very distinguished gentleman who has served in many capacities in our country over the years. And even though he don't look his age, he's been around a while. In fact, he's, he was there at, um, in the early days of the Progressive Liberal Party's early government and even before that. And so we're pleased to have on our program today and to introduce to you Mr. Andrew Dudd Maynard. Mr. Maynard, welcome to Nation Building. Thanks for having me. Wonderful. And Mr. Maynard, of course, have worn many hats. He has been, uh, at one point, the chairman of the Progressive Liberal Party, senior advisor, I call it, to Sir Lyndon Pinlin, father of the nation, senator. And uh, um, in more recent times, he has um, moved on from that organization and um, joined the Free National Movement. So we're going to talk some history. We're going to find out. Um, what would have caused a, a, such a giant in, in politics in our country to switch sides. But we're going to talk a little about the history of our country and his involvement in that. In fact, um, Mr. Maynard, I believe your mother, Ms. Georgiana Simonet, was a, one of the, what you probably say, the matriarch of uh, our democracy. She was involved in the women's suffrage movement. and So share a little about... Uh, starting with your mom your, uh, and, and a little about your youthful growth in, in our country and so forth. Uh, 
I like to talk about um, in the 40s when my mother was not so outwardly involved in politics, but um, she always, see my father died when I was four, going on five, and um, so mama was mother and father. father. And um, she got involved more and more, and then she was uh, a, a, I think she was secretary of the woman's branch of the PLP. And then she became um, one of the framers of the woman's suffrage movement, as we know it today, but really and truly, the women's suffrage movement is not at all what it used to be. Um, and Mama told us, you can't sit on the sidelines if you have a contribution to make and expect other people to develop the country for you. And you do nothing and just reap the benefits. So with that, she pressed on to get us involved. Uh, my brother Clement was mama's first child. And Clement used to be a vice chairman of the PLP. Um, and he was also the president of, the, of the, the civil service union. They formed the civil service union because uh, he used to be a lab technician. Right? And I was working for Bahamas um, Airways. What, during what year was that, that period? When, you were when the general strike took place, I was active in the union. Um, even though I was in holding office at first, um, I was a go-getter, more or less. They used to call me the go-getter fellow who would go and get things done. Was it your brother that brought you into the union or encouraged no, no, you? No, 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 no. I, I, I guess it was in our blood. I got involved in the union myself because I was at Bahamas Airways. And, Bahamas, and I'm talking about when Bahamas Airways was up at Oaksville. And then it moved down to, to, to Windsor Field when the airport moved. What, what year? Can you put some timeline on that for, for us. Um, it was 1956 uh, or somewhere around there. We moved to the, to, to the airport. I remember all the airplanes being flown out and truck lo trucks load of, of parts and equipment being carried down to, 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 to Windsor Field. And the airport was where we now have the sports center. Yes. Uh, what was it? Was it Oaksfield? What, what was it called then? Oaksfield. Oaksfield uh -huh. International? Yes. And, and you, know, you know where the, 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 the monument is? By the street right. that passes. Well, there was a terminal there, separate and apart from the other terminals. And that was the Pan Am terminal because they were the people who started flying in there. Uh, first, they came in. They came in here in seaplanes. And as a matter of fact, when I went to work for Bahamas Airways to do a, a, an apprenticeship, I was probably around 16. And you were born what year? 1940. And we, we, we used to have to go into the lake on a, on a cold morning because if the airplanes, if the goose wheels wouldn't come down for it to land on, on the runway, they had to try and, try and get it back up and put it down in the lake. And you're talking about Lake Cunningham? Yes. And, and we... we you know, you're walking out of that lake on a cold winter morning and your stomach goes 
even with your back. You, you know, it, it, it's cold. And um, we, they used to call me, the fellow who didn't care, I'd go in the water with the other people. But other fellows who were working for Bahamas, there was. And that is probably why I learned so much about the amphibian. Because you got an opportunity to know what would go wrong and so on. So, so if you're, if you're, if a, tr a tradesman or an apprentice is prepared to take on any job, then he, he gets an opportunity to learn more and more. Just, just to put a little context on this, I, I want to go back to your mom. Do you recall or remember her sharing with you, uh, her children, why she decided what was a tipping point for her to get involved in the political arena? Well, when my father died, he left two stores. And he, he was from where? He, he was, he was, he was from, from Barbados. Right. He came here from the, the, the Panama Canal. Right. He was an architect and builder. He came here to build schools for the government. Okay. And I heard him talking as a youngster before he died. The reason he came in here was because too many people were dying in the, in the Panama Canal. Mm. And they were mainly West Indians. Mm. Because they would um, explode the sticks and sticks of dynamite before the people get a chance to move, move from this, the, this, the, 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 the area. So that was during the building of the canal. Yes, that, right. that was during the cutting, cutting of the canal. Right, the right, first phase. And he, he became a bit, you know, disgusted with it and, 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 and left when he found it. And he had an opportunity to come when, here when, to work. When, when, when there was an advertisement, you know, the, 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 the whole of the West Indian islands would advertise their need for workers and specialists, specialists as well. So he, he answered and, and, and he was accepted. So he met my mother in Elutra while he was building a couple of schools in Elutra. Okay, interesting. You see? And he built school in Long Island. You see? And those and he were the 1920s them them or before, prior to 1920s? In the 20s, yeah. In the 20s. And he, he would design them, draw them, do the architectural work, and build them himself. So, and, and he was a very good carpenter. You, you look at some of the work that's done on the, on the Royal Bank of Canada, the main branch. He did that, he originally did a lot of that work. Okay. So, so... He was referred to as a master carpenter, you know, you know the way they spoke. Right. And um, I was able to learn a lot about carpentry because he taught so many people. They said, well, since your father taught me this, let me teach you it. Oh, wow, because you were too young when he died yes. to, of course, learn. Yeah. You were about five, you said? At four. Four, okay. I was going on five, but yeah. I was four, four. four years old. So, so mom, again, back to the question about her, she, did she specifically say, this was what drove me to the movement? No, that's not what, as I told you, he left the stores there. Mama was, when, the, when my father died, they had a store on the market wharf, right next, on the western side of the Alexius. It was in the middle of the Alexius and the back of the, the movie house. The cinema theater, right. not the cinema, sorry. Uh, obviously, the Savoy. And, and, and you are referring to, obviously, they moved to Nassau, to New Providence, so you were referring yeah, no, to... No, Mama came down here right. to do nursing. She was a nursing when Clement came along. Okay, because I know you said they met in Eleuthera, so, yeah. so they got married in Eleuthera in Nassau. No, they didn't get married. Okay. My father was married to a milk white woman. Oh, okay. From Dominica. Okay. And... She d couldn't have children, apparently. But she and him had some sort of understanding. And he 
and she helped to take care of us, you know. Wow, that's interesting. You see, but, but that's a long story. Let's, let's not get into we, that. Yeah, we won't go there. But the Mama got in politics because after Mama joined the PLP, the word got around with the Bay Street Boys, and the building owner was Mr. Duncan, a man by the name of Mr. Duncan. You know where Barclays Bank is on Bay, Bay Street, Street, the main mm -hmm. branch. The main branch. Mm -hmm. uh, east of that was the Iron Mongery. Right, right. And then east of that. And that the location is closed now, the, the, yeah. the branch. You're right. The, and, and east of that was the cent Central Garage. Right. Well, two important things about that. One, we had to tow the line to get kerosene oil. Hmm. This is just after the war. So it was rationing, and you had your ration card. And I would tow the line for a long time as a little boy to get a, a gallon of oil. And Mama used to bake and sell bread as, as well as, as the dry goods that we had in the store. So bread, and she'd fry a whole kit of fish, clean it up and fry And she'd serve fried fish and, and bread. And bread. Not Johnny Cake. Where would she serve that? She served that in the store. Right there? Yeah. On Bay Street? So, not Bay Street, on, on Market Wharf. Yes, right, you did say, right. So, 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 I grew up watching the Haitians come into the trade and so on. And Mama said to me, those people are coming out of their countries trading. If we do not change this country, we're going to be just like them. Wow. Wow. You're watching Nation Building. I'm your host, Winston Pinnock. And of course, we're having a very, very deep and historic conversation with a former senator and former chairman of the Progressive Liberal Party, Mr. Andrew Dudd Maynard. We'll be right back after this break. The concierge service is the best thing ever. Like, it is so fabulous, especially for someone like me where I cannot leave my office, my job to go do anything in the middle of the day because I'm on the radio. The service was so fabulous. The ladies gave me a call. They set up an appointment. They come with their professional looking uh, attire. they just so cute. And they come here and it was a great experience. It took 20 minutes to switch over to the Alive service. It was simple. It was easy. And they just made me feel so welcomed. They explained everything. They hooked me up with my new phone. They gave me my data package. As you can see, hey. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just, it was fabulous. It was a wonderful service, but what I really liked best about it was not only did they come here and make it easy for me, but they continued to check up on me. The next day, they made sure that everything was working properly with the phone. I didn't have any issues. The following week, they contacted me again, um, and I've built a relationship with them. They've continued to check up on me. I feel like I'm part of the Alive family. It's amazing. Hello. Did you get it? Yes, baby. I got it. Don't come home without it. These arms of mine, they are yearning, yearning for wanting you. Where is it? Strongback is distributed by the Jamaica Bahamas Import and is available at your favorite food or convenience store nationwide. For more information, call 341-4091 in Nassau and 351-8282 in Freeport. Welcome back to Nation Building. I'm your host, Winston Pinnock. Today we're here uh, having a conversation with Mr. Andrew Dudd Maynard, uh, one of the historical figures in our country who served in many capacities um, in the Progressive Liberal Party, and I believe he's played a significant role to which he'll talk about a little later in, um, in recent political history as well, on the other side, on the Free National Movement side. Uh, Mr. Maynard, you have a, a rich history, and uh, just for the record, I noted the fact that your brother, uh, former Deputy Prime Minister Sir Clement Maynard, 
who has made stellar contribution to the country as well. Uh, your, your, you have a, a, your mom, of course, who we talked about extensively, who was the seed of, your, of the family's political roots, uh, Ms. Georgiana Simonet, and her service. And I believe, based on history, she would have been uh, the leading figure, and if I'm not mistaken, one who started the Women's Branch. She in was, she was, she was a mom. There was, there was a group of them. There was Dame Alberta Isaacs, Eugenie Lockhart, right? Who had a lot of children? I guess you must hear about Shaggy no. Lockhart, no. who's writing books and so on. She had a, a very good children. Then there was Mrs. Ingram from Hospital Lane up on the hill. Mary Ingram. Right. Uh, and Mabel Walker, Dr. Walker's wife, mm. who incidentally was an American citizen. Right. But she came here to live with her husband, and he came home. And he tour. was Bahamian. Yeah. Right. Dr. Walker was, and, was, was a Bahamian. And a similar story, I guess, to the former Governor General Sart of folks who, who had a, a, a married a British wife who also got involved, I'm told, in the movement as well, or mm -hmm. played some No, role. but so, so art of folks shouldn't be passed over like that. So art of folks quit a well-paying job at the Tribune hmm. to go and run the newspaper for the PLP. Which was called at the time? The Heyman Times. And that also was in the 1950s? No, that was... Early 60s. In the early 60s, 60s before we, not long before we became the, the government. Okay. And, 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 you know, there are people who made sacrifices that we, we like, we f don't, through ignorance, right. just pass over the sacrifices that and, they made. And, and, and many say that our schools, uh, our educational system is not doing a good job at causing the young people to learn our history. If you go to other Caribbean countries, for example, in Barbados, Jamaica, Trinidad, um, I am told in some of those territories, I've just hear say, that the historical history is a major part of study. Well, and and you, you can't go through the primary system without knowing key figures. They have heroes and you know, there are things that we have still not come around to doing to ensuring, I believe, that our young people get some of the understanding of where we have, as a people, where we've come from. Well, we had a secretary at one time by the name of um, Jeffrey Thompson. Jeffrey Thompson was a minister in the first government. Okay? He was the first minister of immigration in the PLP government. In the late 60s. Right. Now, his daughter, Tracy Thompson, Dr. Tracy Thompson, works at the, at, at, at the College of the Bahamas. I am now endeavoring to arrange something so with my assistance and the assistance of others, she can start and complete textbooks for primary level, junior level, and high school level. And then one day, perhaps, university level. Right. You go into the different things that you should put in the history. Yeah. And that you should encourage people to do their best. A lot of children are not motivated because they don't understand why they should be motivated. Right. So purpose is missing in all of this and, yes. and, and history. And have you, have you by chance had a conversation with the, minute, the new Minister of Education? Well, yes, so I, have. I, I have talked, spoken about, to Mr. Lloyd. Yeah, about uh, making sure, because he seems passionate about some of these. He is very passionate. He understands what we should do. What then would you think is hindering the process from getting started? Lack of money at this time. But he is doing his best with what he has. And there are people like me who are trying to help as much as we could. Uh, we had a, 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 a forum at, 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 at COB, 
before it was made university. Well, Sidney Whitfield and myself and Jimmy Shepard's daughter. I know you must have heard of yeah, Jimmy Shepard. Yes, yes, former MP. He, we, we sat down and we tried to get across to people what happened in that strike. There's a lot of misconceptions about what happened and who caused the strike and how it, all that. It would never have been a general strike if we in the airline workers union, the hotel workers union, right, and so on, didn't join in to help the taxi union. Right. And, and Sir Clifford was head of the taxi union yeah. at the time. But most of the time, you were way ahead of Sir Cliff. Way ahead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mind you, he's the one who's, I mean, out, in terms of history, seems to be the one credited with Fine. leading I, the see, way. I, did, I didn't go out there and, I should say, risk my life for praise. What I went out there for was to make things better for my children, even on the third, fourth, and fifth generation. Right. You, you, you see my point? Right. And your children, right. and, and everybody's children. Right. So we could make a better Bahamas for all the children to come. Sure. You see? So that's the reason why I'm so interested in getting this history book done. Good. Let, let, let's just run along, because we have so much ground to cover. And I want to continue to mention that not only your mother and your brother, Sir Clement, that had a, a, a great contribution, but you've also had um, your niece, um, former AG Alison Maynard. Gibson. She does come on the scene. Right. She, she, and, yeah. and your son, who is no longer with us, unfortunately, um, who I happen to know extremely well, um, Charles. Charles Maynard, um, someone that we all share the sentiments that he was really one of those things we couldn't understand. He was gone too soon. But I had the opportunity to know him, and um, in fact, I'm the godfather of his daughter, one of his daughters. But, but you had a history, and the point I'm making is your family, it's, it runs in the bloodline, and, and you passed it on to your, your children as well. So that's well established. Wanted to, to, to move along, though, and talk about a few more historical moments. Um, why didn't the PLP win the... 1962 election. The women's suffrage movement fought like hell, not only for the votes for women, but they wound up getting uni universal adult suffrage. Right. So every man over 21, as well as every woman, could vote. There was a time when men couldn't vote if they didn't have their own home or they can't produce a rent. Right, your landlord had to give you, give you. All right. And there was a little foolishness. And then they used to have the elections in every island on a different day. The same general election, not, not held on May 10th, but the 10th, the 11th, the 12th. Or, or, no, they got to give them a couple of days in between. For each island? Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. The whole idea was so that they could put their forces, their robot, robust forces out there, you know, and uh, they were trading half a bag of flour. Was that legal? It, well, it was, it, there, there was no rules governing the, elections there at was the time? No, well, if, if you're in charge and nobody else saying nothing, you, you, you do what you feel like. You know, in 1967, as late as 67, a gentleman by the name of F.A. Dean went to register, not, not went to, to nominate in his home. And a crooked commissioner tell him he can't register, he can't... Um, 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 he isn't qualified? He can't nominate. Why? Because he doesn't live there. <laughs> Even though, when, where, did, where was but that? But Kelly, who was his opponent, didn't live there either. Where was that at the time? What, what constituency or what that, island? That was what is now known as, as Michael. Oh, so That's it was right here. Crooked Island in Auckland. I mean, down in, in south, in, in the south. You see? Right. So we wound up going to court 
after the general election, and we got the court to agree that that was nonsense that this man said to them. And had, had a by-election? Had to have a by-election. Did you win the, did your party win no. in the, at the time? And I'll tell you why. Why? We had been in power for over oh, about a year then. But we hadn't changed the, the, the voting rights law or the, or the representation of the People's Act. So this is after the 1967. Because you said a year later. I know there was... Oh, so, 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 so that was a part of what brought about the 68 election, was the, it? No. We, we, had, we had then a by-election. Okay. And then... Um, What's the man name in Camp Road? What's the school name after? Why well, I can't remember his name. So, so, so while you're trying to remember that name, just to make the record clear, the, 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 the months after the, 60, the historic 67 election, you had this crisis brought about um, by your candidate not being able to nominate. You then had months later a by-election, right. which then was followed by Sir Lyndon calling a general election. Yeah, and right? the reason why he called a general election was because S.C. McPherson, not McPherson, okay, I was gonna with say. the man name on in Camp Road. The school is named after him, the primary school. Okay, so... W w my, my mind is... is, is when, when it comes to man, you can mention, but the, the election was, was held. Big. And um, um, we, we lost. Right. Okay. Okay. Even though you're the government. Yes. Well, wasn't wasn't it well, a money, mainly money was counting. But money. wasn't it a mainly black population in Michael at that time? Yes. So it why is. would why would a majority black population not support a new government that the represents man giving you a bag of flour, bag of uh, 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 sugar, bag of uh, 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 but, but, uh, uh, rice. But, but many of many of our people believe the PLP invented this idea of, of handouts. Man, they talking nonsense, and that's because they, it's our fault that they're ignorant about those things. Mm -hmm. Because I had a thing going on ZNS after that, and you know that's where we got we thought you'd like to know. Remember that was on the radio. Okay. And on television, when right. television first it, it, came it was, it was said to be a PLP propaganda machine. At the they time. could say what they like. That was education okay. for the people. Okay. And we told them about things that happened. Let me tell you what happened in that election. The by-election now. We were going on with the election. And so Milo was in the polling station in Crooked Island. And, you know, if you had looked at the way things were looking, you'd swear that Moss was going to win. Right, as a PLP candidate. Wilbur Moss. Okay? The night before election, cars were running up and down. Volkswagen were running up and down taking people to and from Kelly's house. Who was the UPP's candidate? Yes. Right? It was raining cats and dogs that night. Like, they had a rain pour down this morning. It was, but it was a continuous rain that night. We went and peeped in the window and saw what was going on. He was giving them part of a note. See, when you vote for me tomorrow, you get the rest. Wow. So people came dressed up in Morse regalia. In the PLP colors. Yeah, and Morse hat, Morse, Morse um, apron, Morse shirt. And still voted against Morse. I mean, big elderly women and man, men. And You're the man says, who do you vote for? Who are you voting for? I vote for Mr. Kelly. That was the answer. You're watching Nation Building. I'm your host, Winston Pinnock. We'll be right back after these messages. I've been a customer for the past two years, 
and I will say the quality of the service is very good. During my trip to Andres, I was connected the entire trip. So that was really good. I was able to contact my family members and let them know how the trip was going. We touched land, we're here. So it was very, it was very good. And I really appreciate that. And also during times like when we had the storm, it was really good to have that service to reach out to our loved ones to make sure everyone is okay. And I really appreciate a lot for that. And even when there's a little technical difficulty, they always send out a little text message to let us know if exactly what's going on. I'm happy to be alive and I believe in best. Hello, I'm Wendell Jones and every time I sit down and I watch JCN television, I drink the Jamaica Bahama food juice. It's so pleasing to the palate. I've been cooking Bahamian dishes for generations. I now use Jamaica, Bahamas product. The rice is very fluffy, very tasty, and good eating. Jamaica, Bahamas product is simply the best. As an insurance agent, my life is go, go, go. But whenever I need a refreshing break, it's Jamaica, Bahamas Island Mixed Fruit Drink. Mmm, good. Hi, I'm Debbie Barton from GEMS 105.9 FM. The effect that Island Junkanoo Juice Medley has on me is <laughs> exhilarating. Welcome back to Nation Building. You're watching uh, this program today. You must be saying to yourself, wow, this is historical. Um, lots of information from our history. And um, we're, of course, talking with uh, Mr. Andrew Dodd Maynard. I'm your host, Winston Pinnell. Mr. Maynard, a lot of what you have shared, and we have so much to cover in this last section, but I couldn't interrupt you because you were sharing history. A lot of what you're sharing, I'm sure many of our viewers uh, must be saying, wow, I didn't know these things ha really happened. Um, it, it isn't, isn't that something you think that needs to be shared with the nation and in written and other forms? Man, let me tell you something. I would never forget that day, okay? Mr. Butler came out of the polling station when he saw what was going on and went about 10 feet in the bushes and warmed up his guts. Milo Bowden Butler did that. After seeing that. And he said, we will change this if God leaves me alive long enough to go to the house again. Mm -hmm. And they did. Is that history something? That's where the representation of the People's Act came about. Is that something that you think uh, is well known, certainly in the leadership of that organization? No, but a lot of people who run the PLP today don't know nothing about it. I hear them get up in the house talking nonsense, and I say, my God, the fellow who says he's leader won't know what has gone down. You know, come on, man. The least you could do is learn about what, you, what you're driving. If you're driving a car, you've got to know how to drive it. T talking about leadership in the PLP today, let me hasten along and ask. Um, what is your views, um, in, in brief summary, of the leadership of the PLP? Since um, your time, since the Linden time, you had, of course, um, the Honorable, Right Honorable Perry Christie that took over and, and led, had a, a, an election, a successful um, run at it in 2002, lost an election in 2007, um, rebounded in 2012, and won. And um, of course, he lost his seat in the last election, uh, which I think was historical. And then um, now you have a new leader in Philip Brave Davis. I know you're no longer a part of the organization, but you certainly had um, was there in the historical period and in the glory days. So, what's your? Just give me a quick synopsis of, of the leadership from Salinden on to now, and 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 the other side too, Hubert Ingram as well. Um, wh what's your quick thought about their? leadership skills and ability and where we are today? Well, since Penling, we had one leader in this country. Okay? Not to current date. I we say we had one who led for five years and come out showing that he understood what he was doing. And that's that's um, um, Hubert Ingram. Okay, so 
uh, what do you say about uh, Mr. Christie? Christie don't know his backside from his elbow. M Mr. Maynard, Mr. Maynard. Well, I'm telling you, man. Mr. Maynard, <laughs> Mr. Christie led our country, not just for one term. Let me so tell you why Christie don't know. Christie's father ran us from his gate when he was campaigning for the PLP. He ain't come out of a, he ain't come, it's not in his blood. He saw an opportunity and, 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 and grabbed it. But, but I hear you, Mr. Maynard, but Mr. Christie not only successfully led the PLP to victory once, but twice. How do you argue against the fact that, that here's that someone... That happened because the FNM wasn't ready. So, so you just dismissed... The do you realize I drive down the street, or on the highway, going to the airport, and going up to the East End, to, 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 to Yamakura? Right. And see traffic bumper to bumper on that road. Two lanes in each direction. You know why you would done um, voted out? They make one song saying all the roads them dig up, dig up. The fool who make that don't understand what Hubert was doing. But but the but he was in the road now. No, but but the people bought into it, Mr. Maynard. They they right. believed That's what I'm saying. that it was inconvenient the and, and people, the many other things the that people made a mistake. No, but but isn't it though the parties, who, each political party's responsibility to counter the argument that the yeah, opposition? Yeah, but you would, would figure, Hubert was foolish enough to figure that eyes can see what I'm doing. So they don't really see. They don't see it. They're looking at it and they ain't seeing it. <laughs> let, 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 let me ask you another historic fact. And, then and, we, and that was only one thing. Okay, All but right. we, we don't have time for the other ones. Let me ha I read where um, during the early days, a number of historic figures around the world contributed financially to the Progressive Liberal Party in, in helping it to defeat the UVP. And names that came up was Norman Manley of Jamaica in the PNP, uh, Kwame Cromer of, Gan of Ghana. And Cromer? Yeah, and Cromer of Ghana, Martin Luther King, and others. So, Sidney Poitier, are you aware of this fact? Sidney Poitier helped me to succeed on winning in more than half a new Providence in 67. And so these other figures, international figures... I don't know about that. I, I, I wasn't privy to that. Okay, okay, okay. And, and the un you talk about you being involved in the union. It was also said that unions from other Caribbean countries in some way contributed as far as supporting the strategy or giving information to the PLP at the time to help them overcome what they were facing. Yeah. Okay. Now, moving on um, to more modern and recent times, you were a part of the Progressive Liberal Party when it was ousted in 1992. What, in, a, in 30 seconds, what do you, f looking back now, were the people right, and what was it really that did it uh, to unseat the Progressive Liberal Party after 25 years in power? The PLP didn't stay on course. Okay? The PLP allow itself to become irrelevant, irrelevant, irrelevant to the people. Right. All right. And boy, black people don't take much nonsense from one another. Not anymore, it seems. No, no, they, they never did. They take. Well, they put up with the PLP for twenty-five they, years. They put up with all. Well, see, wait. We went. One of the things that where the PLP went wrong. PLP was giving too much, not bribing, but giving. A fella come, he say he want to buy a boat, he, he want to he wake that boat between islands, so and so and so and so, and they'll even lend him that money on the condition that he could get the contract for that island or the, that group of islands. Okay. The so, wait now, mm -hmm. he don't ever pay for it. So you, you, you use your people to hand out. Okay, okay. So that was an error. Now, um, and I was arguing against that all the while. M moving along, um, you then became a part of the CDR. What, 
in your mind, was the failing of that organization to capture the imagination of Bahamian people? See, what happened there is that BJ was trying to be a decent fellow. Decent. So you shouldn't be decent in politics? No. It's a war. After you win, then the war over. <laughs> Seriously. While I was fighting, all kinds of things was being pushed on the people's doors. I saw myself, trucks, and how BJ's wife is an ignorant woman, his mother is a sissy, and all that kind of thing, you know. Well, anybody called my ma sissy, I go on. I fool with them. So you said he didn't respond appropriately. No, he, he, he and he figured he's not going to stoop to that. You, you understand what I'm saying? I hear you, sir. So he allowed himself to be defined. Yeah, and he did. He did not. He did not even straighten the bet, as a, as the old people say. Let me let me run along and ask you, how did you handle? Um, being a foundational, well, or close to the foundation of the PLP, certainly your mother was, how did you handle joining your son, who initially decided to join in with the FNM? How, how was that? How difficult was that for you? It seemed like a paradigm. I remember speaking to Dr. Nottage way back years ago, um, and he said to me, asking him to join the free national movement, for him to consider that, was like asking him to go against his mother's womb. That's how difficult it was to move. Uh, he, it was easier to move from the PLP to the CDR, but to go to the FNM was, was a bit too much for him. How, how did you handle that with, with your son? Well, see, first of all, when I left the PLP, I came out of politics, full stop. And then the CDR came along, and I said, I'll help you organize. They didn't want to organize in the way that they should. They wanted to be mild and meek, meek and mild. And that doesn't work in politics. No. Okay. So, 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 in, so you, you decided, again, the question was how, did, how difficult was it, quickly, for you to, to become a part of the free national movement once your son decided to? Well, sure. What happened was BJ and those decided they're going back to the PLP. To the PLP, he, BJ and a couple of fellas. Right. My son tell him he ain't going back. Okay. Right. Now, so he ain't going back. And one day he came to me and said, "Daddy, I need you to do something for me, please." You don't have to get involved, but I, I need you to do something for me. I said, what's that? I need you to sit down and, 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 and um, negotiate with the FNM for me and a couple of other fellas to join the FNM. I said, why? He said, well, Daddy, I didn't want to upset you, so I didn't tell you this. But I sat down with people like Val Grimes, who told me I have nothing to bring to the table. And my blood run hot. And this is Charles saying yeah. this to you. My blood run hot. Because he had me to bring. I brought Val to the damn table. <laughs> Sorry. I brought Val to the table. In the PLP. Right. So how you could tell my son he ain't going to bring it? He got me to bring. Okay. You understand my point? Yes, sir. And I said to myself, well, the last are being first now, eh? but we can change that round. <laughs> And I eventually changed it around properly in this last election. I went out there and campaigned at a point where I was in headquarters during the day and working during the night. So, but before we get to the last election, so you, you decided to, you went ahead and helped in the transition of um, what was the remnants of the CDR at the time joining the FNM? Mm -hmm. And you said you, 
you, you explain a part of the reason why. The, you must have been a proud dad and felt that all your mother's legacy and your own time invested in the PLP to see another generation in the form of your son, your youngest son, um, become a, not just a candidate, but successful candidate and then a minister in the now, I, I could, I could be a straight in something? Sure. When I was negotiating with the FNM, I made it clear to them, I am not negotiating for Charles to get a nomination. No Fenton. Okay? All right. What I'm negotiating for here is for them to give a hand and change in this country. Right. Because it's gone way over the hill. Right. Okay? So you made it clear from Mr. the Ingram break. Mr. told me. Now, once you bring him to me, you ain't telling me what he must be. I said, well, I ain't got no conditions of what he must be. But I want you to know that him being an MP is not a condition of mine either. <laughs> and what was Mr. Ingram's response to that? See, because Charles is the fellow who was running the, the corner hotel, don't forget. Right. So what was Mr. Ingram's response to that? I'm going to say, listen, you don't see in your son that I see. Leave him to me, he's going to be all right. Okay, okay. In 2012, the moment of defeat, not just for Charles, but for the party, how tough was that for you? It, it, was, it was tough because... Some people in the FNM were not seeing politics as it is. Okay? And some things were not done. That should have been done. That should have been done. And you talked earlier, of course, about things like the road project and so on. Uh, to a note before, as we get ready to wrap up, um, on, a, on a somewhat of a sad note, how did you overcome the passing of this child that you had raised that I saw pictures of him at your side growing up? He's been in politics from a, 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 long, a young lad. From the time he could stand up. Right. How, how tough was that as a dad, knowing that this seed that you had, had followed you so much in terms of history and, and your passion, to, to see him at a young age... Um, pass away, how, how difficult was that to overcome? Let me put it this way. I have not stopped grieving yet. But I had to dry my eyes and get to the work educating his two daughters. Do you understand me? Because I promised them between cries for Charles and I realized I was depressing the children by doing it in their presence. So I promised them that if I have to wear patch on top of patch on my backside, I will see that they get educated. And I ain't teething nothing. I ain't selling no drugs. I ain't doing nothing that's wrong to accomplish that. I'm depending on leaning on the everlasting arm to get it through. Yes. And so far... They're not disappointing me at all. Good, good. Two quick questions before we're done. Um, as you look at our country and look ahead, do you see, are you concerned that we still have leaders of the old generation? The current leader of the free national movement, our prime minister, is in his 60s, um, the leader of the progressive liberal party, um, Mr. Philip Brave Davis, is also from that old school and in his 60s as well. And, but that ain't a real, a real old school yet. Not, not, not yet? So you don't have a problem with the, with, with, with the, leader, the, the generation not of today. leaders? And okay. I'll, tell you, I'll tell you something. Okay. Mr. Minnis assured me, I didn't ask him for the, the assurance, but he assured me that he wants to serve two terms. And he wants to change the Constitution so no prime minister would spend more than two terms in there to get old in the, in the job. Right. And I told him now, when you're doing that, consider 
the age going in. Because if a fella go in too early, he's wasting time. Right. Okay? Especially if you can't listen. And so far, I am very happy with what Minnis is doing. Mind you, even though a significant, a poll was released recently, and we don't have time to get into it, but a significant part of the population is uneasy, to put it mildly, about the current administration's performance but I a have, year I, in. I have come to realize that polls could deceive you. Okay? Because I'm sure the polls were deceiving the PLP in the last election. All right? Um, but I'm not resting on Lord, and I wouldn't allow fellas around me to do so. We, but we, as a people, have to trust Menace. And if you got a suggestion to make to him, go to him and sit down and say, listen, man, I don't know what you're doing out there, but anyhow, here's what I suggest you do. And just if 10% of those suggestions are taken, we leap forward. Mm -hmm. You understand? You cannot, t today, today is, a, is, a, is a funny day. When I hear the president of another country talking, I say to him, I say, thank God we ain't got him. Okay. That I, I suspect you're talking to the president up north. But anyhow, as you leave the program today, this is indeed historic. What is your lasting hope as we close? Uh, what you want to say to our country uh, that you would like to see over the next 10, 20 years in terms of a, a vision for the country? What is your hope for our country? I would like to see us get our educational system in, in line to suit us not about what Europe or America is doing. Let's look at what we're doing in this world and what we need to make it run smooth. And, and to stop putting peoples in the public service who you know are not producing. Believe me, you go to national insurance and you can't get anything done. And, that, and that's been a long-standing problem. Some might even accuse that, that problem going way back to the first PLP administration. Yes. But, but the, 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 and finally, what role is faith going to play? Uh, and our Constitution has some wants to remove the preamble that, that speaks so heavily to faith in, 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 in Christ, in God. Um, what role does you see faith playing in a prosperous and holistic Bahamas? Well, first of all, that preamble can't move. Any nation who doesn't understand that God is in charge, stupid. You're bound to, to, for failure. And to those politicians that want to do surgery to the Constitution, you say? Well, if the, the Constitution could do it some surgery. But as but far as that. the values, as far as the Christian values. Is oh, concerned. you got to have Christian values. Okay. And we got to have, stop, stop allowing ourselves to be used by people who are spewing out Christianity and doing something completely different. Mr. Maynard, we don't have enough time to talk to you. We have to have you back here at some point in the near future. But thank you so much for coming and sharing your thoughts. On behalf of all of us at Nation Building, it's been our pleasure to uh, bring this to you today. Uh, stay tuned for next week's edition when we'll have another exciting and informative guest for you. And have a great week from all of us at Nation Building.